So Christian, you're fired. <laughs> you still can't get the timing on this right. Yeah. Th th three strikes, you're out. Like that three was strikes, you're out. And I said I'll do it next time. I'll do it next time. Um, <laughs> also, you can un like you can click the thing again to stop it, so we don't have to live with that 10 second pause at the end of the something like that. Yeah, anyway, it's it's all awkward. I'll, one day I'll get it right. <laughs> one day. Not today was not that day. Um, not that day. You know, we could actually practice this. Maybe we should do that. We should do that training, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, good afternoon, Gidopsians. Uh, welcome to, I don't even remember, episode 54 of GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. Um, we, I'll let Christian introduce our guests today. Um, some folks, I hope, are joining us from... Uh, a conference, um, maybe, maybe, maybe we got new viewers. Um, so last week I was at a conference that was actually here in my hometown of Oakland, California, um, called Developer Week, and um, we were there. We were handing out stickers and T-shirts and beer and hamburgers and stuff, um, and that was a really, really great conference um, sponsored by uh, the Developers Red Hat Com like group. Um, and uh, yeah, where, where, where our guest is joining us from. Um, so uh, on that exact note, other things sponsored by uh, the Red Hat dot, or the developers dot Red Hat dot com includes a lot of um, a lot of books and media um, and resources that we provide to people in that community. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Christian, who will introduce Natalie, because they actually already knew each other. And Natalie and I just met today. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, and and also one more thing about that um, the, the developers um, uh, team here at Red Hat. They're the ones that helped me publish my book. So um, very big kudos to to that team. Uh, fantastic team, by the way. I, I I've worked with them. Um, yeah. So um, Natalia here, I think he's on this side of me. Um, is uh, uh, Rosal wrote a book. Right, uh, wrote, wrote a book uh, called a uh, GitOps Cookbook. Natalia and I actually go back. Yeah, right there. Uh, <laughs> Natalia and I actually go back um, quite a ways. Right, we're both essays uh, when uh, when Kubernetes was this weird new thing, right? And like we were supposedly experts on it, so we used to fly all over the place, right? I think we finally met in person in in um, Amsterdam. Was it Amsterdam? No, Vienna, in Vienna, um, and then. Um, uh, you know, basically just kept working together as we moved uh, to different business units and different roles at Red Hat. So, uh, Natali, thank you so much for being here. Um, it, I know it's late over there. And Natali is in, you are in Italy, but I think I want to get this right. You are in Nice or Milano. Or Milano. Okay. 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 Milano. Yeah. Okay. It, it's aperitif oh, okay. time over here, so I'm here with my yes, exactly. My wife yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I have, I have, uh, and, and uh, me and Hillary are drinking coffee just because it's like noon. By, by well, what I like your, there. I like your fedora cap, and I like your, I, uh, cap. yeah, mm -hmm. nice. His fedora cap is very yeah. nice. I'm a little jealous. Um, my coffee is empty, which is a uh, tragedy. <laughs> yeah, last drop. <laughs> last <laughs> drops. <laughs> that's that's where we're at. We're 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 looking for any remaining caffeinated uh yeah dredges yeah, here. Rem remnants, yeah. So yeah, the remnants. No, it's yeah, so, um uh, so bona bona sera, uh Natale, thank you. Um bona sera. Bona sera. What's really cool about uh, Natalie's book, and you know, he's he's going to talk about it, and um, you know, more more in depth, is that we actually were writing our respective books at the same time, and then it's like, oh, it's it's actually kind of cool because like you get the path to GitOps, and once you're done with that, you can actually just like start reading GitOps Cookbook with like, you know, my mine was kind of like more overview, you know, kind of preparing your your mindset for the practices, and like. The cookbook is literally what it is, right? Cookbook. All right, these are what <laughs> the recipes, you know, that relate to some of these practices. So, um, so yeah, welcome, Natalie, and uh, and uh, tell us a little bit uh, about your book and the background and uh, who your co-author was, all the all the juicy details. Yeah. Um, first, I'm very happy to be in the coolest show for DevOps. In nice. Right now, I think this is the coolest show. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I know it's late for me, but I could miss that, Christian Hiller. It's, it's a fantastic <laughs> show. Um, and hi, everyone. Uh, I see some friends in the chat. There's also Evan. I think you met uh, Hillary at, at the conference with Developer Week. Um, 
And Evan did a great GitOps demo. Uh, you have to see that. Maybe you have to invite also Evan through this. Uh, it's a great game. It's a game where you play with car and you have to tap with your phone to move those car. And you then you change, update the app with uh, using GitOps like this. And then mm. you, it's going to shake your phone. It's really, really cool, really interactive. Um, yeah, but uh, really happy to be here. And Hilary, I want to tell you this story about how I met Christian. So I know Christian, we were at SSA to get specialist solution active for open source. But then, you know what we did? Uh, at that time, there wasn't uh, uh, any site for a bit engineer. There were people that in the data center installing. And me and Christian were installing OpenShift 3 in a data center in Australia. So we had to do a time zone shift. Yeah. Like, really, follow, really. follow the sun. We did follow the sun, literally, like handing we off. Follow the right? sun. Yeah. <laughs> but it was from RHEL, really from RHEL and IP, Pixie Boot to OpenShift and so on. So that's how I met Christian. And when I saw Christian in Vienna, I said, Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope that that data center has since updated to OpenShift 4. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know. I hope so, yeah. I think it's EOL. Well, OpenShift 3 is EOL. I think it's just on this last, like, kind of, like, maintenance tail. I think in a couple of months, it's, like, it's, no more it's support. It's been. Yeah. Yeah. It's been... Um, it's been EOL, right? It has, it has been any, anybody, anybody still using OpenShift three stop, um, yeah. upgrade. Um, that was recently, um, one of my pastimes. So they, they moved me. I, I talk about this sometimes, right? My new, my new role is what they call leadership. Um, which means I'm very rarely hands-on with anything anymore. Um, it's like, uh, design specify and, and then pass off to others for implementation. And so, um, I can still be found answering questions in the OpenShift subreddit. Um, and I'll give you um, I'll, I'll give you brownie points if you figure out which one is me. And I don't even think Christian knows my Reddit username, not my real one. I have one for work, but I have a personal one too. I, I know I know the Twitter one, so if it's the same, if it's similar it's to the not, uh, okay, then I do not. Know. Not so. Credit <laughs> if you guess which Reddit, which Reddit user answering questions in the OpenShift subreddit is me. Um, and there was a thread recently where somebody was talking about that they inherited some sort of OpenShift deployment and they didn't know how to access it or like how to get into it, and it wasn't documented or anything. And a lot of the responses were, "It's probably OpenShift three. Nuke it and install four point twelve." Um. And uh, yeah, so if you're still, for whatever reason, on OpenShift 3, uh, please, please don't. Um, you're not going to have a fun time. There's not going to continue to be support. Um, yeah, OpenShift for 4. For the sake of security, too, right? Because that's yeah. like 1.11, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 uh, we, we, it, you have access to all of the resources through various Red Hat channels. Please, please, please contact somebody. We will help you. I think uh, Mock... <laughs> Does it mock Mike here? Yeah. Open o OCP three is done. Reach out if you need assistance getting off of it. Yes, all of that. Anybody would be happy to help. Um. So I um. I have to make at least one really bad joke about eating GitOps for lunch. <laughs> um. So oh god, OKD okay, four. No, don't. Um. I mean, OKD okay, is great. Yes. Um. Anyway, so let's, Natali, let's get back to your book. Let's eat some GitOps for lunch. Tell us what we need to yes. know about your cookbook. Right on. Um, hey, Hilary, I want to say, uh, first, there are people in a time zone that, this show is fantastic. I say people from Moscow, Pakistan, wow. So their time zone is more later than me. So kudos to you all. And, uh, and now I want to um, come back to what Christian say. So uh, I think this book, the GitOps Kit cookbook, uh, it's really nicely connected to other books that we have uh, at developer.com, like the one that Christian wrote. And I say that because, uh, uh, for instance, the Christian book, uh, you can find the link uh, from, uh, from this page. You can find all the books available. The Getting GitOps is really kind of uh, uh, has the narrative of why GitOps, what are the best practices, what, how you should structure your directory, how should you structure your report. So it's a kind of design pattern for GitOps and kind of introduction uh, for architectural introduction. And then uh, I think the GitOps cookbook go straight to the code. 
okay, I know the theory, I know how I have to do that, but now uh, show me, show me the code again, okay? <laughs> like a Linux store, right? Show me the code, show me how I can do that. Yes. And but I want to tell you also this: uh, the GitOps cookbook is it's it's created with a climax. I don't know if people like it or not. So we wrote the book uh, with this in mind. You start with the the fundamental, which is Git. Then you move to container. So we go through the chapter where you learn how to use Podman, build that, Podman in Podman, Canico, build packs. So all those cool technology to create container, right? So we are assuming container is the fundamental unit before you arrive to, you know, Argo CD or any GitOps implementation. Let's start from the foundation, containers, Git, right? And then we move it in the other chapter with other important tools for mo mostly using in GitOps workload, which are Customize and Helm. Again, those leave uh, alone. So you can use Customize without uh, GitOps. You can use Helm without GitOps. GitOps is just a methodology, right? It's an approach. But we want to create this climax, no? Customize, Helm. And then you arrive in our, let's say, Red Hat Opinionated CI/CD. Red Hat Opinionet is a CI/CD is a cloud native CI/CD. In this case, it's Tecton. So you have a CI part, which is implemented by Tecton in this case. So chapter six goes into a list of receipts about Tecton. Um, so how you can create uh, your um, example for um, Java pipeline, how you do your unitary test, how you uh, insert, customize, and help inside uh, a Tecton, how you use um, Tecton app for, for creating multiple, uh, Tecton tasks. Um, so the, the, we, we arrive at chapter seven, finally to a GitOps uh, tool. So in this case, again, is a red dot opinionated way. So it's Tecton plus Argo CD. You know that GitOps is an approach. So an open source implementation could be Git Argo CD, could be Flux, could be anything, right? Um, we're focusing on Argo CD. So chapter seven and chapter eight are the ch chapter for Argo CD. And while chapter seven, uh, it's an introductionary to Argo CD, how you deploy an application, how you use customize, how you use Elm, right on. Chapter eight goes a little bit in advanced technique. And I want to say that, Hillary, in chapter eight, mention explicitly Christian book, uh, mentioned Christian Hernandez, like he's a famous. Uh, uh, <laughs> to say that you can see, yeah, please download the book and you see. I mentioned Christian uh, in the first part of the book because uh, it, it's really, the, uh, again, it's is nicely connected to the get, Getting GitOps book. And with the book here, you can start implementing your receipt, uh, right, uh, on that. So. Chapter eight is advanced. Uh, so when you call advanced, I, I'm talking about application sets, or um, we're talking about secret, very hot topic, right? Um, yes. How do you manage secret? I I follow the show here at the, at the GitOps Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, uh, you know, we have many options. In the book, we go through sealed secret and external secret. And we think external secret is the best way to handle it because it's an agnostic API, right? That touch many identity, um, uh, sorry, many uh, secret management uh, store. Um, and yes, I think chapter seven and chapter eight are really the chapter that for uh, Argo CD receipt, right? Advanced CD. But before going to there, we, 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 we have uh, outlined this path, uh, really from, begin, from the begin to the most advanced technique. Yeah, what, what I really like, and uh, Arslan, I hopefully, I'm pronouncing your name right. We'll, we'll get to your uh, your comment in a second. But what I really liked about the approach of the book um, is that you started at code and containers, right? And so um, you know, uh, you know, a, a lot of the times, you know, me coming from an admin background, um, you know, Hillary being an SRE, like we we think about like the application as it's, as it's running and taking care of it, you know, at, at runtime, right? Keeping the lights on, making sure, you know, if you're working at a company. Making Wait sure a minute! Make you money. <laughs> you just like completely blew past eleven years of quality engineering and software delivery in my career. Yeah. <laughs> like what the heck, yes. dude? <laughs> but the but like but it, it starts. Well, my point being is that it starts at the application, right? It starts like GitOps, kind of at, at least from inception. You know, it, at, 
it um obviously it's evolving but at, at inception it's, it's all about like kubernetes taking advantage of kubernetes right and taking <clears> advantage of those reconciliation loops but yes you had the, the 10 years of, of quality it doesn't even make it to the running state without going through you first so like right, yeah, you're, right? You're absolutely right um so um but yes i like i like how you, you start off as like it begins with get and podman right or you know get docker or whatever you may be using because you know that's honestly you know like if you want to say where does get up start it starts kind of like right there right it's it, it it starts at the at the developer building a building a container um so we got a comment by arslan so hopefully uh he says we appreciate we can have more information using jenkins and argo cd the get ops way i believe your book you mentioned you, you had a chapter on Tecton and Argo City. I think that can be translated into Jenkins, right? It's, it's still kind of like the similar idea. You're using Tecton for the build aspect and or Argo City for the deploy aspect. Can you get, maybe go a little bit deeper on that on that chapter? Uh, yeah, um, uh, you're right, Christian. Uh, it's talk about cloud native CICD. So we're not talking about Jenkins. Uh, I mean, no Jenkins. Uh, we could mention Jenkins X, but Jenkins X is Tecton at the end, right? Yeah, so, it is. I was going to say right. Jenkins X. Red Hat had uh, contributors to help create that project, and Jenkins X is actually just, it's just Tecton under the hood. It's just Tecton under the hood. So we're talking about cloud native CICD because this book, if you, if you, hey, I have the hard copy, by the way, here. Uh, mm -hmm. Looks nice. And uh, if you read this uh, subtitle here, there's written, Kubernetes automation in, in practice. Um, so it's really focused on Kubernetes, right? Well, Je whereas Jenkins is agnostic, can run in virtual machine. Actually, Jenkins is, is architectured for really for virtual machine, right? It, it, it's, it came from the traditional world. While Tecton is really designed for containers and uh, Kubernetes. That's why we put the focus. But to uh, Ar Arsalan point, the, the 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 structure is still valid if you use Jen Jenkins for the CI part. So you build your container, your golden image, right? And then you you let Jenkins do some operation like, uh, um, you know, using, uh, I don't know, in, in the book you use a, ta a Tecton task to use customize to update the, the Kubernetes manifest stored on Git to, uh, you know, to reflect the new change in the app. Maybe you can use the same approach in, in, in Jenkins. Yeah, um, um, the um, Christian is telling me my sound's a little distorted. Well, that is unfortunate. It was great earlier today, so I don't know what happened. Uh, oh well, I can't. Running, I can't troubleshoot that. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> blame Fedora. Bl yeah. <laughs> you know what? My cat was actually literally over here playing with the cords and cables on my desk earlier. So I'm gonna blame the cat. Oh well. Sorry, folks. That that that's a bummer. Um, you can do git commits with Jenkins. I've done that a lot. Um, so if you can do a commit to a git repo, which you can with Jenkins, um, then you can get Argo CD to pick up those changes and do the CD pieces or anything else that's watching the git repo to do whatever action is required. So put the thing in the registry if you're using a local registry. Yes, you can get Jenkins to do that. Um, it's just um. It's just bash scripts that you orchestrate really at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's well, uh, I think Gerald's Gerald's on um Gerald said bash is the new language of GitOps, which is kind of funny. Um because yeah. it's <laughs> always been the language of GitOps. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, new. Yeah, it's, it's 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 the um yeah, because just you know, it's just you're you're dropping to a shell is like, okay, I'll just drop into a shell, I can do whatever I want at that point. Yep. Yeah. So what's um uh not to plug my book because it's about uh, Natalia's book, but I kind of talk about, and I kind of borrowed um, this this from conversations I had with Gerald um, about like trying to marry uh, asynchronous tasks with synchronous tasks, right? So like the traditional like Jenkins, you know, CI/CD, uh, even with Tecton, right, is very um, uh, very synchronous, right? Like it's very like one thing waits for another. You can do uh, DAG, right? So you can do the um, dependencies on, on one another, right. whereas get up, whereas GetOps is kind of like it's asynchronous, right? Like you just kind of like what did Gerald say in one of his blogs? Is fire and forget, right? Is it's like you you kind of like you know you do a commit and like you don't really get any information back from Argo CD or any really get up. It's like it it, it just um, you know when the reconciliation loop happens, it 
it just happens. So kind of like to your point, Hillary, you're saying that like you have Jenkins just do a commit, you know, instead of doing the actual deploy, do a commit to a Git repo and then kind of Argo CD, you know, uh, takes it over. I mean, I guess you can write uh, like a Tecton task or, or Jenkins job or whatever to kind of monitor, like, you know, actually do curls, right? Again, you're dropping to the bash. No, curls. don't, <laughs> don't do that. You can, I mean, you, you can, and tell me if my audio is better because I fessed with the dials, but you can, um, but it's don't. I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you can, but you don't. Yeah. Don't, don't do that. Um, like you can, like don't, if you need to have better insights or whatever, um, uh, observability is your friend, yep. right? There are so many things that you can get. You don't just have to get like alerts and problems out of your observability. I cannot, I keep trying to explain this to people. Uh, observability isn't just what you need to care about if things are bad. It's what you need to care about. It's it's like, it should be a snapshot of your, of your state, right? Yes. Your observability should be a snapshot of your state at that time, your application state, your deployment states, whatever use some observability solution for those things um it also gets us down to things like dora metrics which i think we're actually going to do a um a uh, show on later in later the quarter in the summer um is dora metrics is something i'm living and breathing right now um so uh and there are tools for those and anyway so the point is is there are tools for these things and ecosystems around them and ways to ways to get that information if you have to do a curl because you need some sort of awareness into your CI pipeline, fine, do it. Yeah. I, there's there's always a reason to do the thing that I'm like, no, don't do. There's always a good case for some things. There's always um, a but caveat, it, right? Yeah. There's always a caveat. Don't do that except for when. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, this is that is that's that's those are the times where you're looking at implementing observability solutions, implementing solutions that give you Dora DevOps metrics. Those are the things that you're going to want. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, that. That's why Grafana and Prometheus exist, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's you know, or or whatever other metrics provider observability. You know, it's it's. Uh, and we've built the monolith before. That's why we. That's why we're trying to get away from Jenkins, right? Like, yeah, you know, this like whole thing. So, uh, yeah, and I've I talked about this. Um... I talked about this when we did our talk at um, GitOpsCon last year in Valencia, right? Um, the the thing about modern architectures is they're more observable. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's, I think, almost too much data. Yeah, now you have to put in filtering. Now you have to start yeah. filtering your data so that you're only getting the most useful. That's always been true, though. It's just actually easier to understand how much data we have. But that's always been true. Yeah, true. <laughs> Um, Arslan also has a question about Tecton. Uh, how can we integrate signed GPG Git commits via Tecton? Um, that's something that they've been struggling with. I actually don't know. I haven't used Tecton a whole much. Well, uh, with pipeline as a code, I think you can sign just a commit on your source control manager like GitHub. And so it, each thing is signed, uh, connected to a Tecton uh, action. Yeah. So you you mentioned. Uh, do you talk about pipeline as code in your in your book? No, unfortunately, that wasn't really ready at that time. It was a kind of a bleeding edge attack, so I couldn't uh, provide anything uh, uh, nicely working. But uh, yeah, I think a Tecton. Uh, sorry, Tecton pipeline as a code is really cool technology. And for people familiar, you know, with GitHub and GitHub. Um, uh, action or, or you know, a uh, function like, you know, slash test, slash CI, slash retest is the same thing. You can use the, the same uh, structure and, and each application repository has its own pipeline uh, in a subfolder called that Tecton where you've stored this pipeline. So I think it's really good way to define uh, pipelines per microservice or per app, but also it's... It, uh, not force, uh, suggest, recommend you to go into a, a, a Git workflow. Like you do a change, is on your branch, and then you do a pull request rather than committing straight to main or master. Um, and when the pipeline, when the pull request is open, Tecton pipeline as a code will, will create the task, will create the pipeline. So you can test that everything is fine. And only when everything is fine, you can merge to, uh, to, the, to the main branch. 
So I think it's a very cool practice. Unfortunately, I couldn't add in the book in time. You know, technology is super fast. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I need to but <laughs> write the version two now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, actually, me and Gerald were kind of uh, chatting about this a little bit. It's like you, you you get halfway through a book and you're like, well, like half the stuff, you know, I mentioned I have to go back and like, you know, modify it like you're literally modifying it as it's almost going to publish because just like it, technology goes, you know, like um, one of the things or well, a couple of things, it's, it's kind of interesting. People always ask me about, well, can Argo City do this? Can Argo City do that? I'm like, well, that's really a CI task. And and then really, like Tekton has um, a, a lot of these features, kind of like built in, like pipeline as code. There's also Tekton chains, right, for like supply uh, security supply chain, um, you know, for for signing uh, your uh, either containers or your packages that you're building, uh, signing your deployments, um, you know, verify with um, with six store, you know, that 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 sort of thing. So that's um, uh, uh, that's that's something that's that's really really cool. Uh, about Tekton, right? Like it's because it's like, you know, we focus on GitOps, but it's like, you know, that's, you know, DevOps is so much more and there's so much more that comes before like the actual GitOps uh, aspect of it um, that uh, but some technologies that are, that's really cool. I, I like the po point from uh, Arsalan, like when Tekton pushed the YAML to Git, so maybe some task that we customize change the, the manifest, the commit should be verified, but isn't the, like when you configure your user and you configure your user being as uh, sign having the sign signature for your user isn't automatically attached to that commit if you are using the personal uh, uh, access token? I, I'm supposing GitHub here, but you know it could be generic. <laughs> when you have your Git user um, configured with si signature, right? Yeah. Uh, so. And I really wish we had somebody uh, in the in the comments from our secure supply chain team at Red Hat because they would they would know this so much better than I do because um, I'm so far onto the ops side now. But the answer to that is basically yes. But I think that what we're talking about is um, anything an automated process authenticating with the signature, and um, they're probably talking about two jumps back. Right, so the process might be signed, but what did what did the what initiated the process, and was that also signed? It's, I'm inferring. I could be completely wrong, um, and tell me, but I think that's the issue, and so that's that's one of the things where um, I think I think Tal has the answer here. Um, right on. If you load the GPG key in your user and uh, and then add the Git config with the GPG to the to the task. But well, the Tekton task will read the, the secret that you attach to a service account running the pipeline. So you really yes. mount that Git config into a Kubernetes secret, and then you attach the secret to the service account running the pipeline. Yeah, that, as I say, the, the, the passphrase should exist depending on exactly how you're doing this. It might exist as an environment variable that gets referenced um, instead of somebody having to manually put it in every time. So. Um, which is there, like why I think why cosine is actually pretty cool, right? Because it just it, it does that verification, for, like you just say verify this for me, um, versus trying to verify the signature yourself, right? Because you've already uploaded those keys, right, to yep. to to, to Sigstore. So, um, but 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 uh, to Hillary, to your point, yeah, you if you just want to do it with GPG, you can just load load the passphrase. Or I I've um I've ran it, I've ran GPG keys without without a passphrase, right? For for things like this. You, yeah, again, that's terrible. You, you, yeah, again, you don't want to do that, but um, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's um. We're, we're at this point, we're like coming up with ways to hack around this problem, and and I'm not, ha yeah. you know, we're not hands on keyboard for doing this. This is like armchair coding automation here. Um. So at, on at runtime on the CLI for the passphrase, yeah, you should still be able to automate that and have a script that responds to the prompt to the passphrase with an environment variable. That's probably one of the best ways to do that. Um, there's probably better ways. Honestly, there's probably better ways. Somebody's got to know this better than I do, but that's yeah. that's probably what I would do in the situation where um, what you're talking about. But I'm also still thinking about Jenkins and we were talking also about Tekton. So, Tekton, so it should yeah. still work roughly the same. Um, but 
Yeah. It's on chains, I believe, can automate it for you. I think so. I think so. Yes. Um, and, and it's either a Kubernetes secret or some sort of other environment variable that get that can get loaded and, ex and, and utilized during runtime. Cool. Then chains is tech preview, right? And right now yeah. in, in, you know, for Red Hat, OpenShift. Um, so it's going to be available soon as GA. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I posted the link down there. So um, in the chat. So if, can you memorize that, that link? So this is why you tune in live. So that way you can just copy and paste the links. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like getting ready to copy paste that link. I'm trying to let it, get it to let me click the thing instead of just display the thing. It's very, it was not happening for me, but yeah. Oh, so um, <laughs> I'll make uh, that's why I showed it that it was going to display it, but yeah, I'll make, I'll make Christian slack me that later, or I'll rewatch the stream and pull it out of the, the restream <laughs> comments. Yeah. And pa pause it. And yeah, exactly. Oh, the restream comments. Yeah. 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 Um, so cool. Using an environment variable or something. Yeah. Let us know, please, what you do there. Um, I'm very interested. Like hit us up on Twitter or on like uh, the Kubernetes Slack or the CNCF Slack or something. Tell, tell us what worked. Tell us what we didn't know. Um, tell me that I was wrong. I love what I'm wrong because it means I had an opportunity to learn a new thing. Um, but yeah. Um, and if anybody knows better than uh, my armchair, uh, guessing here um as to as to the best pattern uh also tell me when i was wrong i will happily i can't know all the things i really can't know all the things anymore no, yeah not anymore no <laughs> once There's too many time, things. when tech was easy <laughs> yeah when tech was easy when tech was as easy as just racking a server ftp yeah ftp your code okay i have in, in our talk, right? In our talk, I asked who has deployed code to production with FTP, right? And like, I put up my hand and like three other hands went up. And I was like, okay. So people are like, SFTP, sure, but FTP, no. And I'm like, man, I worked at some interesting startups, y'all. Um, so <laughs> right on. then later I asked the audience, it's like, okay, so who here has daisy chained? Jenkins jobs together. Like you have a Jenkins job and it triggers another one, which triggers another one, which does all the, and you eventually get all three of the things, right? And I the same. And you know, the same hands went up. Yeah. I think the same, good. like three hands went up. <laughs> uh, I, was like, <laughs> I, I looked at the audience and I was like, some of you all are making me feel very old and oh, you can actually yeah. leave. That's fine. <laughs> they had, they don't know how good they've had it. Yeah, exactly. Back in my day, this was harder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sure. So um, I'm going to actually found the the link. So um, the book we're talking again, uh, Natalia here is uh, talking about his GitOps cookbook. I am pasting the link to the book. Cool. Um, so um, while you do that, I was going to ask Natalia, in your opinion, what's the like don't miss thing about about your book? Uh, it depends. It depends. Uh, the, the smartest uh, answer is it depends. Because uh, if you want, want to start really from scratch, I think you have to read all the book. It's, um, it's, it's a must. But if you are, I, I think this chat is really advanced. Uh, maybe you can jump straight to the Tecton and Argo CD chapters. So chapter uh, six, seven, eight. Those are the more juicy for those advanced people, let's say. You can find receipt, useful receipt for uh, most common use cases, right? Um, so I recommend six, seven, eight for advanced folks, people that would like to get more about, uh, you know, also new cool tech about creating container or Helm customize. You can go to chapter three, four, five. Uh, again, it's not, you know, for containers, it's uh, all the o OCI toolkit. It's a, uh, it's Jeep for Java. It's uh, <clears throat> there's Canico, there's Buildpack, there's a, a ship right as well. Um, there are many technology to build containers that maybe you are not aware of. Uh, so it, it's, it could be a good uh, rehearsal or technique of building container image. Cool. Very good. So, so the second half of your book saying like, if you've already kind of familiar with um, like if you already have done CICD and if you're kind of familiar with cloud native tools, like, all right, cool. Like you can just maybe focus on the second half, kind of like the more advanced topics there. Yes. Yes, definitely. And, uh, we, 
uh, my co-author, and I would like to mention Alex Soto Bueno, which is a developer advocate here in Red Hat, we were thinking this was kind of a starting point for people that would like to you know, really get started with GitOps methodology, GitOps approach. After, they, after you know the theory, you can start doing something. But you know, for I think the, the advanced cases, really advanced cases, deserve a separate uh, or a second edition or, or a separate uh, uh, book because this uh, I think this is um, a kind of a uh, um, introduction with most common useful receipt for Argo CD and Tecton. Um, to to your point, Christian. So yeah, go straight to the second half if you are expert. Uh, you will find things like uh, sync waves, books, uh, or, or secret management. Uh, I'm, I'm reading the book again because I can't recall everything. Um, you know, um, app, application set. Uh, those piece of code, copy and paste. You can. Uh, by the way, the book is is meant for a mini cube. Uh, we, we tested the boot for mini cube, and I want to tell this dealer and, Chris, and Christian when mm -hmm. you write a book with code, you have to fix the version, right? And you say, okay, I'm installing Argo CD version X, uh, Argo CD rollout version F, uh, Y, uh, and you have to fix the, 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 the infrastructure, let's say. So we're targeting a certain version of Minikube, a certain version of Argo CD, a certain version of Tecton. Um, uh, but in this way, this is universal and stay, uh, you know, reproducible. Let's say in one year, you wanna, you have the book. If somebody gives you books at the conference, you have the book, right? Uh, in one year or two years, it's still working because the version are, are, is fixed and the platform is uh, agnostic. The book is tailored for Minikube. So any Kubernetes will work. Any, any, any Kubernetes where you have sufficient permission to install, uh, you know, Argo CD and Tecton. Um, uh, you, you need to have this kind of cluster admin or a sufficient permission. Other than that, the, the book is really tailored for all Kubernetes. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also say... kind of like also, um, um, when, when you're like building these containers, like if you build them from OpenShift, they'll run on Kubernetes just fine. So it, it's kind of cool to be able to like, like, you know, test on Minikube and then deploy it to OpenShift. And you're like, oh, hey, like it, you know, it, it works it's, similar. So it's going to work similar. It's not necessarily going to work though. Okay. Cause I've done this the other way around. The when other I'm tired, way around. right? You can go from OpenShift to Kubernetes. You cannot go from Minikube to OpenShift necessarily because if the container image you're using hasn't removed the root user, it will not run. Um, then it goes back to OpenShift's built-in security context and the the things that we enforce to guarantee that, um, that the you know security first is is really part and parcel with with how OpenShift behaves. So just remember that because I have completely grabbed the wrong Postgres image because I was what was it? It was like you know when am I ever building demos? I'm building demos at ten o'clock at night, right? And I'm a tired person. My day starts at seven in the morning. Like ten o'clock at night, I'm ready to be asleep. So I've done this. And then I sat there and scratched my head. I went, why does this not work? Everything's perfect. There's no linting issues with my YAML. This should be fine. Let's go check the logs. And I go and check the logs. And it's like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> there's a root, there's yeah. a root user in this image. Let me go get the one from Red Hat, right? So and then everything was perfect. Yeah, so, so don't forget that. It will work. Uh, OpenShift, all of its built-in security context stuff, portable back to vanilla Kubernetes of some kind. The other way, no guarantees. Um, I usually so, say it. I usually say it like when someone says, "Hey, it works on Kubernetes, but not on OpenShift." I go, "No, that's not the problem. The problem is you built the container wrong." Right. And yeah. that's, I mean, and, and then and then I wait for them to prove me wrong, and they go back and they go, "Oh, actually, you know, you're right. Like if I just you know make this a little bit more secure, it runs just fine." Yep. Yep. Most important feature in OpenShift by far: built-in security context. Uh, I'll wait for somebody to prove me wrong. I though I don't. I know people love the GUI. The GUI is nice, but I'll wait for somebody to prove me wrong. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Natali, we've got a little bit more than 15 minutes left. I, I'm going to ask you the most important question I could ever ask you. What book should I write? Well, Ooh. that's a good question. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of uh, the site trailability engineering books. Um, maybe there aren't, there aren't many book. Uh, you know, what I think what a book really should tell is a, is a, is a good story. And uh, this good story comes from the experience. All the things you are saying 
today, right? Oh, I had this issue. Oh, I had done this. If you share this in the book, it's going to be really valuable. Um, I don't know how you put the title of this book, but sharing experiences from, uh, you know, you, you find a title, but sharing yep. your experiences on what you did, it's really, it's really, it's really nice. It's really good. I, I have a great title for a book, but it's not stream appropriate. Um, we'll, this... we'll, tweet, we'll tweet about it, I guess. Yeah. No, I can't even tweet about it. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's really not appropriate. So... <laughs> Some people know, a lot of people who I think pay attention to the stream, because I mention it time to time. I am what is, I'm, I'm self-taught, right? I did not, I have never taken a computer science course in my life. That is, that is a, an important thing. I graduated high school and I went to work. Um, and, and now I'm a principal engineer at Red Hat. And that's, that's pretty cool, right? I can't complain about, about that. Um, one of the things, and it has gotten so much better over the years, but one of the things that was so rough for me in self-teaching was reading documentation and reading examples and the use of foo and bar. And at one point I looked at my husband and I was like, what the is foo and what the is bar? And like, where did this come from? Like, please, can we please anchor our code examples to like real world use cases, things that tell stories, things that help me understand what these pieces are supposed to mean. And that is literally the book I want to write with that title without the expletives bleeped out yeah, uh, exactly. about how to write a useful code example for somebody to understand it. Because the person you're writing for should be the person that you should expect to have no previous context, not the person who already knows the things you know. Um, so that's the book I always think about writing. And then I'm like, oh, man, that's an intimidating book to write. I'm not doing that. I'm not smart enough to write that book. Yeah, so somebody yeah. please write that book. Yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> I'll buy it. Yes. And you'll, you'll, you'll put it in the back. I think also, um, the, the, the way, and I think that's kind of like the way Natalia approached the GetOps cookbook because like the, the word of the cookbook, right. Whereas like my book is more like the theory of flavor profiles versus a cookbook. Right. I think most people want the cookbook <laughs> because they like, no, like I, I want to know like how to do X, Y, Z, give me the recipe versus like, you know, like it, it's fine to know what flavors go together, but like I just want to be able to deploy this here. So I, I think um, you know that's that's uh, one of the cool things about having that kind of format, right? Like mm -hmm. that, you know, just just teach me like you know how to make that thing. Um, so it's that's that's uh, that's kind of cool here. Or something. I've yeah. I've never seen the username Bacon Fork join our stream chat before, so I think uh, potentially new viewer or or one time viewer, right. whatever it is. Uh, yes, so many nonsense variables. I hate them all. They're terrible. They're not helpful. Uh, don't do that if you're writing an example or you're writing documentation. Please do not do that. That is awful. Um, but also, Bacon Fork is an amazing username, and I am sad I didn't think of it. Bacon Fork. That's so. Is that a fork you can eat after you're done using it? I have so many questions, and I want all of the answers. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Cool, cool. So, um. So yeah, so let's, let's, let's round this off a little bit to talking about, uh, talk, talking about KubeCon, right? I believe all three of us will be there. At, oh, Amsterdam. you're coming. Are, are you? Are you? I uh, am. I'm going to be there. I booked yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So Natalia, are you going to be there? You're in Italy. It's a short drive to Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I will be there. Yeah, we, we're going to be at the booth with, uh, with Daniel and uh, Kevin. Uh, so oh, yeah, we're going to have hitters. Some... Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get Daniel O and Natalie, uh, yes, Hillary, yes. myself. You can, you can, you can ask us questions one on one. You can't there. miss it. Um, and I say Hillary may duck out though. We don't know. <laughs> I I didn't sign up for booth duty. I'm not. I'm coming because um, I'm a member of the Kubernetes Community Code of Conduct. Oh, okay. Cool. And we have a panel discussion. Hey guys, submit. There, I posted it on Twitter. Um, and I will post it again. Submit your questions for the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee because. We are really um, wanting to provide that human face to this kind of nebulous entity. Um, so submit your questions. We can't answer specifics on specific issues, but we can talk broadly about how we look at things, what it means to be on the committee, part of the committee, um, et cetera. So do that. But that's that's actually why I'm going to be there and not I haven't actually signed up for any sort of booth duty. Yeah, no one's no one has cornered me into it, <laughs> Jen. Uh, <Yeah>. So <laughs> until they uh, 
until they until they make me, I don't actually have any boost shift. But I'll be around. You'll be able to find me. Um, bonus points if you find me and I have Get Up's Guide to the Galaxy stickers with me because that's the thing I bring to conferences. I want it. And I, uh, Christian, we we gotta do go. We gotta do the Open Shift Coffee Break CubeCon edition. So we're gonna Again, stream yes. from CubeCon. And we're gonna yeah, find cool. Hillary, whatever she's not at the booth. Wherever she, you know, we're, we'll, whatever we'll, she we'll is, we'll find her. Yeah, I don't know I'll in Amsterdam, it, outside, yeah. whatever. <laughs> we, we're gonna stream it. I'm very probably going to on. I'm staying the weekend. I don't know if you guys are staying the weekend. I'm staying the weekend, and um, I do I do HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts, um, which I had a competition this last weekend, and I got ow, I got body slammed and fell to the ground, and it really hurt. But anyway, um. So I, the person who I take Hema, which is, uh, it's a, it's a sword guys. It's a big two handed sword. It's really fun. Um, the person who I take Hema from his instructor has a class, has a, um, he's the 11th, like 11th ranked Hema competitor in the world. And he's just outside of Amsterdam. So I'm, I'm going to try, I emailed him. I'm going to try and go to a class of his over that weekend. So you could find me potentially um, at the conference. You could find me potentially at a sword fighting class. Uh, we, you know, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. So I, um, so I'm actually, I'll actually be at both uh, KubeCon and, and Argo, ArgoCon. Um, and uh, I have a talk uh, for, um, for KubeCon, right? How GitOps saved our lives, right? So we're, we're going to, um, Something we're doing the GitOps community uh, with the Flux guys are gonna bring in some like end users, you know, uh, on, on the on the Argo City side. I'm gonna bring in some end users to see um, uh, talk about like you know GitOps and like how we implemented it. So check it out. I put I posted the link down there, um, and you can catch either one either one of us. I am personally excited for Amsterdam. Um, it's gonna be my second time there, but the first time I I went there wasn't nearly long enough. Um, I'm a museum geek, so I visited like I think four or five museums when I was there, and I was like, "There's so many museums here, um, absolutely love it." Um, I also had, oh, Natalia, I think I'm gonna put you on mute. I think I had some of the best Italian food I think I've had <laughs> in Amsterdam. Uh, don't joke. Don't <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, <laughs> but it, it was, it was. Uh, um, I haven't been to Milan yet, so who knows? That's why I asked to the KubeCon folks to do a KubeCon Europe in Milano. I'm, I hope they accept this, uh, uh, you know, this, this um, for the next KubeCon Europe. I really hope they select Milano. Let's see. So we can bring you all to the original right uh, food, the good one. Uh, you got the Zwei Händler. Yeah. Um, so, that so yeah. That's Zwei. I mean, it's two-hander. Um, yeah, Zweihander. It's a two. It's it is. It does two-handed. It's not exactly a great sword, although great swords might fall into that because um, specifically the German here matters because the style of fencing that we are recreating is German, um, and there are a t there's several German systems. The one that I'm primarily learning is called the Meyer system. Um, and, um, that is like late German, uh, swordsmanship. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I have, um, I'll try. I, my friend has this great video clip from one of my matches where I technically lost the exchange cause he hit me first in the arm, but I smacked the guy on the head real good. So, um, I'll try and get some of the, some of the footage of, uh, of it up. Um, I also... In, in real life, that means you would have won because you would have Correct. lost the arm, but he would have died. So Correct. you're the winner at that point. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it's this is we're fencing for points here. It's a competitive sport, so technicalities matter. Uh, that was a really, really fun exchange. There was also um I'll try to post some of the things. You can watch me lose terribly, but I've I've only been doing it for like eight months, and most people have been doing it for a couple of years before they compete. So I was very proud of myself. Um, but I also bought a sharp sword. Um, that means like a real one that can do damage and it is a hand and a half sword. Um, so I do, I do my training sword, which is called a fetter, meaning feather is, um, is this Y hander. It's, it's the two handed. It's about, um, about four feet long for people who are across the pond. That is, um, what is it? A, a yard is a, is a meter, right? Yeah. A meter and a third, one yeah. point, 1.3 meters roughly. Um, so um wow yeah 
we completely derailed and I got I got talking about swords. I yeah, love I love this sport. It's one of my best friend and it's how she met her husband over 10 years ago. Um, they they finally dragged me into it and now I will not shut up about swords. So I'm yeah, just so like the worst. <laughs> You have a stream about swords. I think you would. Yeah, that would. That would be uh, the get off's guide to Hema. I might do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah mm, sure. I'll think on that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's. Yeah. So I want to kind of round this off, uh, talking about kind of some of the. So like Natalia, you're from the, um, um, you know, developers BU at Red Hat. Uh, you guys not only do like some of these books and, and some of these trainings, but you guys actually do um this thing uh labs right like live, live labs um something with with dev nation can you talk a little bit about um the 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 argo cd one the the, the get ops um dev nation i think you i think you guys call it howl i believe is what it's called yes um we have a really really great event coming on and you you put the link thanks uh gerald uh which is in, also in the chat will deliver an operation GitOps workshop uh next week um this workshop is part of the dev nation events dev nation is a is a branding uh, from red Hat developer doing a developer uh oriented the workshop and and kind of activities and from uh, today we had for instance we had the Oriet. Uh, interviewing some of the some some customers using operation GitOps and hey there was a customer showing their migration to operation three to operation four um <laughs> that, nice. so coming coming back to the point and full this, circle right yeah <laughs> yeah this, you see this, this these people doing great stuff with tecton with argo cd when uh, they're literally doing a really really cool stuff they're using external secrets so you see the validate and pattern implemented in the real production right so that's fantastic. And this was today, but next week, Gerald will do the Argo City workshop. Um, it is full out, but in case uh, any free spot arrives, we will open again the registration. You can attend this workshop. In any case, we will do it uh, um, again uh, and for, for next time. So you, what you have to do is just register at that session I read that developer and stay tuned for on all, all our events coming either virtually and in person. Um, so um, I, I put the link in the chat here in the private chat, Chris, and you can you can send that. Um, if, if you wanna hear, uh, wanna listen to anything about Dev Nation events like the Argo City one, uh, this is the place to register. And uh, um, yeah, that's it. And looking forward to see Gerard in action for a Dev Nation GitOps uh, workshop. Yeah, and it's it's kind of and this is free by the way. So like sign up, get some free training not only on OpenShift but using OpenShift GitOps, which is Argo CD. Uh, JWHB, you asked, um, is the Argo CD workshop focused on usage with OpenShift? I believe the answer is yes. We're going to be uh, they're going to be using Argo CD. With OpenShift, a lot of that stuff gets easily translated if you're using um, some other Kubernetes distribution, right? Um, and so uh, that's kind of like what the what the workshop is. Uh, yeah, but um, Christian about. is also kind of um, universal. It's OpenShift GitOps is the Argo CD installed there, but the structures are yeah. valid for any Argo CD. And the source of those instructions is uh, um, the tutorial that you also wrote, write in Karakod and then we migrated into Instruct. So really the, the, the exercise as valid for any OpenShift, uh, for, sorry, for any Argo CD, but this specific workshop, we are using OpenShift GitOps like an, a, a version of Argo CD. Um, uh, and we're, we're letting the, 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 the attendees use the OpenShift experience. But again, the technology and the instruction are valid for any Argo CD at that version, of course. Yes. Cool, cool. Yeah, and uh, Gerald, he's, he's still on, on chat. So he's, uh, uh, I have like a internal running joke. I say Gerald Ops, right? Because as, you know, what's, um, uh, I, I think Gerald and I are kind of kindred spirits, right? Because like, as opinionated as, as I am, Gerald is also opinionated, right? And so I, I in, in a way I, I respect that. So, um, you know, even when, when our opinions differ from time to time. Um, so, uh, and, and, it, and yet it's another, yet another essay that uh, when I was in the essay, we worked together. I still remember the time, I think I was writing in the back seat of his like Mazda, which is, which was supposed to be a two seater. I don't know how I fit back there. Um, 
but there we go. I think I was. I, I think I was in Montreal when I went there. I'm not sure. My memory is shot, Gerald. So if, if I got any of that wrong, let me know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, is well, in Vancouver, right? Yeah, he's he's yeah he's in Vancouver, but I, I think we we visited a customer in in Montreal because right I think I think Canada is a region like it's just one big region. It, they don't have like east or west. It so. is big. Yeah, RX eight. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh, it was Toronto. Yeah, RX eight. Yeah, and it was suicide doors. Yes, I, I remember that. And like I had it like with my backpack. I was like crunched up in the back, uh, driving to lunch. It was really cool. Um, I can imagine that. I I can see that. You're not that big a dude. I could see how you could yeah, squeeze. Just, <laughs> I, yeah. And I did squeeze, yeah. And like I had my um anyway, so that was it was in Toronto. That's right. That's right. It was in Toronto. Now that I remember. I, I was gonna say, Christian, you're not opinionated. I've never known you to have an opinion. That doesn't <laughs> sound like you. What? <laughs> never, <laughs> That's like I me know. having an opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm, we're completely flexible, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> never never opinionated, never prescriptive. Yeah uh so cool cool all right awesome so uh yeah so we dropped all the links there um if you missed any of the links if you're watching the recording if you're on youtube it should be in the in the chats there so um if if not you can bug us on twitter um let me see here you can find um the mermaid on, on twitter right uh dro dropping hillary's uh twitter handle there you can find me on twitter as well right there's my handle uh there the king the get ops kingpin there and then natale if you want to follow, you'll always see all three of us talking to each other. So it's, 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 so, it's true. We so. basically just talk to each other. I think, uh, maybe you, you guys probably talk to each other or other people more. I literally only have a Twitter for this stream and for work. I don't do a whole lot with it. Occasionally I remember it's there and I try to do something social, but really I'm just not a public social media person. Um, so that's what it is. Um, Twitter, LinkedIn, follow, um, I want to thank you, Natalie, for coming on, especially because it is, again, late. I want to thank our viewers who are so late. I know Tal is in Israel. We had Pakistan represented today. We had we had the whole globe here wow. today. It was really cool. Told um, you, the, the coolest show, I told you. Yeah. Um, and once again, our chat was very active. So thank you folks for keeping the chat active. It makes us smile. Uh, you could see us in, in the replays where we're laughing at things that came up in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to, trying to be polite, but we're laughing at, at your yeah. commentary. So most appreciated. Um, I don't have anything else, uh, as mm -hmm. you know, it's, this was a perfect stream to, to use my usual sign off for, because we talked about this. Uh, once again, folks, choose your technical debt wisely. I will say goodbye. I'll let Christian do his thing. I think he's ending the stream. I'm hands off keyboard and we'll catch you in two weeks. Yeah, we'll catch you in two weeks. Let's see if I do, I do it right. All right. Thanks, Natalia. Uh, Bye, Christian, be before yes. we close, uh, I want to say if you want to try the cookbook example, you can go into our interactive labs on the portal. I put the link in the chat, Christian. So those are the labs available already pre-built, made by Christian about how to use uh, Argo CD and Opposite Kitops. But there's a lab called the OpenShift Playground. It's an it's an empty OpenShift where you can install uh, OpenShift Kitops and run all the exercises uh, from the book if you like to. Just cool, this cool. If you want to Look at that. We're gi we're even giving you uh, um, uh, an OpenShift cluster for you. Yeah, we'll uh, give you also clusters. Uh, yes, sweet, awesome. <laughs> all right. So uh, so again, thank you, Natale. Thank Bye, you, everyone. All. It's a pleasure. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Ciao.